And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan on this Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. You point and click anywhere on this map of the continental U.S. with Hawaii and Alaska in the lower left. It'll bring you a forecast for that location along with any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories. And something I want to highlight, Hawaii devastating fires on the island of Maui. Uh, there have at least uh, been over a dozen fatalities with many people injured and uh, it's been uh, just a horrific event there. Uh, here in the southern U.S., excessive heat continues with the potential for flooding. Thunderstorms could produce flash flooding parts of the Ohio Valley, uh, western Tennessee Valley. So an active pattern remains in place there as well. Here in Alaska, we continue to have smoke, especially across areas of the interior that have impacts to general aviation and even the ability to fight uh, wildfires. Red flag warning remains in effect until 10 p.m. this Wednesday evening for areas of the central and eastern interior. They could be reissued uh, tomorrow on Thursday. I'll take a look at the recent record glacial dam outburst from out of the Suicide Basin on the Mendenhall River near Juneau. That happened on Saturday evening. And then we're watching the potential for a gale force low pressure system that'll impact the Gulf Coast and Panhandle over the weekend, especially on Saturday. And of note, yes, we have passed the, the peak of summer. We are losing uh, in many areas over, well over five, five and a half minutes of daylight now each day. And as we gather that darkness at night, it'll allow for the Aurora viewing season uh, to get underway here, especially within the next week or two. Uh, so as long as we can get solar activity cranked up and Aurora visible, we'll start to be able to see them here the latter half of the month and certainly into September. So here's the smoke. This is Beaver up along uh, the middle upper Yukon River. Red flag warning in effect there through 10 p.m. Temperature as of early afternoon there, uh, 74 degrees. Smoke keeping temperatures down as well. Along the northwest coast, Point Hope has low overcast. Northeasterly winds will be picking up along areas of the northwestern uh, Arctic coast down to around the Bering Strait for tomorrow, which could lend towards some turbulence for aviation interests. So here is the damage that occurred this weekend along the Mendenhall River near Juneau, where condos were actually uh, washed into the river. We had the, the foundational supports uh, washed away with record flooding. This is the what we call a hydrograph showing the gauge site there on the Mendenhall River. So up in the Suicide Basin, this water had been melting away from off the glaciers and, and accumulating. And there was a flood warning in effect to give people a heads up that this was going to occur. But the magnitude of this is quite impressive. Notice the spike there late Saturday evening nearly 15 feet, that's the gauge site. Doesn't mean the water is actually 15 feet higher than the picture behind me, but that as far as the way the gauge is calibrated there at the river site. So it pushed it into major flooding. That is the highest uh, water level observed at that gauge. And it's the most significant flood since these events have been really monitored and ongoing since 2011. So a very significant uh, glacier dam flood event. And it's something we need to just constantly be aware of the fact that with the melting that's occurring with these glaciers, these types of events could become more frequent in the future. Looking at uh, the fire, Situation: We have red flag warnings here for the central and eastern interior, Tanana on up through Fairbanks, Fort Yukon, due to scattered thunderstorms that can have lightning strikes that cause more fires. And a quick check of the Alaska Wildland Fire Dashboard here. We have over 150 active fires now across the state. Notice they're centered here through the interior. So this is the area where a lot of the smoke, the denser smoke is occurring. And so far, uh, this fire season now, we have surpassed uh, 250,000 acres. We are approaching 255,000 acres. So the fire season has become more active later in the summer, which is usually a reversal. This is normally a wetter time of year and the fire season has a tendency uh, to be at least winding down or not as intense, but we've seen a pickup because of the warm temperatures and the more active uh, thunderstorms that have developed. So uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, Thursday, August 10th, if we look at the grass component to fire danger, it will be highest here over the Yukon Flats, uh, parts of the North Slope. And then for spruce, 
uh, that's one of the best carriers of fire. It's a longer term fuel, but it certainly is highest here along the Alcan border in through the Yukon Flats. So this area will be carefully monitored tomorrow should any thunderstorms develop there. There could be additional red flag warnings here uh, to take us into tomorrow and maybe even Friday. But on the satellite image, we have weak area of low pressure. We had a, a data uh, transfer problem because of a, a network server issue the other day. So it's made it a little harder to get the full satellite loop in. But of note on the satellite imagery, we have a low pressure here in the central bearing. A weak one out over the Gulf and just weak trough of low pressure, thermal troughs that we see set up this time of year across the interior, which serve as boundaries and focuses for uh, shower and thunderstorm development. Later this weekend, a stronger gale force low is going to come out of the North Pacific up into the Gulf, and that is going to bring uh, some gale force winds along the Gulf Coast as well as some moderate to locally heavier rainfall, especially along the northeastern Gulf Coast into parts of the Panhandle. It could pick up two, three inches of rain this weekend. So here is a weak low this uh, Wednesday afternoon, on, kind of toward the western Gulf, another just weak trough of low pressure here in through the interior across northwest Canada, thermal type of low or thermal trough, and then a weak area of low pressure here in the central bearing. And around these features, we have areas of light rain, scattered showers with some thunderstorms, and then areas of smoke uh, pretty prevalent here across the interior. And as we go into Thursday afternoon, we expect just a lingering weak area of low pressure off of uh, Kodiak Island and then south uh, east there of the Kenai Peninsula and the Western Gulf with these thermal troughs continuing uh, north of the Alaska Range and on over into Northwest Canada. The low here in uh, the bearing just kind of sits and spins with lower cloud cover and some areas of precipitation. But by Friday, here's that hint of the stronger low that's going to come up out of the North Pacific. This low is going to come up toward the Gulf and then pull back a bit toward the uh, Northwestern Gulf. And with it, frontal system will bring uh, copious amounts of rain to areas of the Gulf Coast, especially uh, from around Cape Suckling eastward into the Panhandle. And also some gale force winds wrapped in along uh, the frontal system and the center of low pressure itself. Looking at temperatures, low mid 50s for lows in the panhandle on uh, Thursday morning. A few areas if you have some clearing, upper 40s, mid upper 40s, Copper River Basin. Uh, Thursday, we're still not looking at really warm temperatures, but at least 60s uh, up through the Anchorage Bowl, so Sitna Valley, maybe 71 there at Glen Allen. Uh, Gulkana. Uh, the areas along uh, the Panhandle generally staying a low to mid 60s. Lows Friday morning, low mid 50s Panhandle again, some upper 40s here and through the Copper River Basin, generally above 50 uh, along Kenai Peninsula and uh, in through uh, Anchorage. And then Friday afternoon temperatures are going to generally stay in the 60s. We're not looking for any big warm ups unless you can break into some sun. So what's going to take now this time of year across the uh, Yukon River Valley, lows will be in the 50s, warmest temperatures, and even along the Arctic coast, not especially cold, 37 there at Gyadvik. Uh, but otherwise, we could still see some temperatures up around 80 degrees tomorrow uh, afternoon. Uh, battles on over toward uh, Fort Yukon, which could add to instill st instability and help develop some additional thunderstorms, increasing uh, the fire danger. But for now, there's quite a bit of smoke in here across areas of the interior, and uh, temperatures uh, back out through the uh, Seward Peninsula will generally be 50s to near 60 degrees for highs and then lows Friday morning uh, quite warm back toward Kotzebue near 60 degrees that'll be a, a warm muggy night and morning on Friday and then temperatures notice the warmer temperatures on the south slope here of the uh, Brooks Range, we're going to get kind of a northeasterly downslope enhancement there, allowing for some warming. And there could also be some scattered thunderstorms develop around Kotzebue Sound and just east of there. So this area will have some warmer but more active weather when it comes to showers and some thunderstorms. For the southwest, uh, lows along the coast, upper 40s, near 50, lower 50s interior, upper 40s along the Aleutian Chain and the Alaska Peninsula. Temperatures at best near 60 degrees as you go up the Kuskokwim uh, 
rivers. And, and uh, as we go into Friday morning, uh, lows again, upper 40s to around 50 degrees common across much of the southwest coast down along areas of the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. Temperatures Friday afternoon may uh, flirt with 70 around McGrath, but otherwise generally in the 60s for the interior up the Yukon and Kuskokwim rivers, upper 50s to near 60 along the coast. So extended temperature outlook August 15th through the 19th as we get around and just past mid-month. Temperatures are expected to average uh, a bit above normal along the Brooks Range and North Slope, including the Arctic Coast, as well as areas of the Panhandle. Near normal across the southeast interior along uh, the Alaska Range, but a bit below normal potentially here again in the southwest and then extending down along the Alaska Peninsula. There are going to be some pushes of moisture uh, that come inland and then cross uh, up into the interior that could enhance scattered showers and some thunderstorms from time to time. It looks like the best chance of a, a bit above normal precipitation will be along uh, the east, southeast, central interior from Northway back toward Fairbanks and then up along the North Slope and Arctic Coast uh, near to a little above normal precipitation expected along uh, western areas of the, of the Gulf uh, surrounding Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet.